When you're trying to determine primary production in lotic habitats, or excuse me, lentic habitats, that is lakes, one of the best techniques to use, as we're using today on binny water, is the light and dark bottle method. Now, although this is usually done during the summer, it can be effective in the winter as well to find out what kind of production, uh, balancing out with respiration, is occurring under ice. Basically, what is involved is taking a couple of bottles, one that's completely blackened so no light can penetrate, and a clear bottle. Whatever depth you want to test the level of production or the level of photosynthesis versus respiration, you then remove a sample of water from that depth using the Kemmerer water sampler. The water is then placed in the bottle and oxygen concentration is taken, a reading, for each bottle and noted and then these bottles are lowered to whatever depth of water you wish to work with. For example, let's say you're trying to determine how much photosynthesis versus respiration is occurring just under the ice. Well, obviously, obviously then you lower the bottles approximately a meter below the ice and try to establish what's occurring in each of the bottles. Now theoretically, if photosynthesis is dominating, the light bottle will gain in oxygen during that 24-hour period. Actually, in the light bottle, you have a community of both photosynthetic organisms, the phytoplankton, and respiring organisms, the zooplankton. What you're determining then is total photosynthesis minus respiration. This light bottle then gives you the net production. The dark bottle, on the other hand, with its phyto and zooplankton population included at that depth, since it's blackened, is metal measuring total respiration during that 24-hour period. <clears throat> what you end up with at the end of the period then, of the time when you bring the bottles back up, is if there is photosynthesis outstripping respiration, you'll have a slight gain in oxygen in the light bottle. In the dark bottle, you'll be measuring total respiration of the community. If there is very little light penetrating, both the light, dark, light bottle and the dark bottle will show a decrease or a decline in oxygen concentration. So it can give you a relative idea of just how much effective light is penetrating. Likewise, as these two students from limnology class are involved with right now, you can lower the bo bottles the whole way to the bottom, in this case about 14 meters of water. In this particular case, you can find out if first any light is penetrating that deep. That's highly unlikely, but it should be checked. Second, you can determine the amount of respiration that's occurring from communities taken at 14 meters. In other words, their water samples are taken at that depth. The zooplankton, bacteria, whatever else may be part of the community will be in those sample bottles. This is one of the best techniques, as I mentioned, it can be used for determining primary production. But more importantly, when you're working through the ice in winter, it can give you an indication of the levels of respiration versus photosynthesis that are occurring just under the ice and are occurring at the bottom as well.